Hey, this is Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Hey, sorry, I had a meeting all across campus, so I had to walk all the way over. <laughs> That's fine. I just wanted to be sure that you were on the call before we got started. And it's um, it's so unbelievably I hot here today. Huh? It's in the 90s today. Oh, wow. We're having having a little in, uh, little uh, fall summer. <laughs> yeah, I mean we had the our first freeze yesterday night, so I'm envying you right now. I guess uh, we can get started. So on the call, uh, we have Nina, Firat, Jing, and Ergen from UT Health, uh, Nansu uh, from UCSC, Jeff and Yuling also from UCSC, and we have Matt uh, from uh, Fitbear who jo who's joined us today to discuss how uh, we could um, actually uh, work with Fitbear folks to ingest uh, Fitbear. So, okay. Um, so, right, uh, I just wanted to provide a couple of updates for, for the action items. Uh, we have, uh, still have the ongoing discussions with the CEDAR and common pilot folks. We'll have the meeting tomorrow at uh, 3 p.m. Um, so please free, feel, feel free to call in if you would like and let me know if you want to call in for that meeting. Uh, the meeting um, call-in information is different. Also, uh, with reference to contacting repositories, we have Matt, who's from Fitzer online today. Uh, we talked with George from ICPSR. I think we will have him call in on one of the days uh, to discuss, um, although I do see there are lots of uh, uh, discussions going on already. And Alejandra and Philippe will be contacting IEDB, so hopefully we'll get to talk to them. I contacted the Viper folks, but haven't uh, had any response from them yet. And Ian is going to be contacting NDAR and GDC and PCIA folks to set up calls with them. Uh, so, uh, Matt, do you just want to have a brief uh, introduction first before we dive into talking about what we'd like to do? Uh, sure. Uh, so, my name is Matt McAuliffe. I'm one of the co directors of the FitBur. Uh, informatics systems. FITBUR is uh, a combined uh, effort uh, with the Department of Defense and NINDS here at NIH uh, to develop an informatics system to support the collection of um, traumatic brain injury data, both civilian and military. Um, the FITBUR uh, system is actually built uh, um, off of um, what we call BRICS, which is the Biomedical Research Informatics Computing System. And we also deploy BRICS to support Parkinson's disease research, uh, iGene project at NEI, uh, nursing has an instance uh, called CDRNS. Um, but uh, so part of the, the BRICS infrastructure, recently we implemented, um, uh, for historical reasons, our data capture tool called ProForms used a different study definition than our repository used and had a different uh, study definition than what our what we call the, a meta study. Um, so we came up with this um, idea to have a unified study definition. So all three of those bricks used the same exact study definition and we based that on the DATS, um, I'm not sure which version, two point something version of the DATS model. So the way we define the metadata and how we define a study is consistent with that uh, version of uh, the specification. And our hope is that we then can make that data more easily um, findable uh, in the FAIR uh, definition, findable uh, within um, data met. Thanks, Matt. Um, sure. So I guess uh, one of the 
I just wanted to put up the NCE plans as it pertains to FIDBER here. So the idea was that we will work with the, the repositories themselves, and they can, if they can, they would be able to expose that JSON um, from their repository for direct ingestion into DataMet. Um, and so there are there. It's like Essentially, we have uh, FITBER popping up, and we have two aims for the no-cost extensions. And for FITBER is pops up in both. So the first A for aim one, uh, where we would do deeper indexing, which has you know um, data element descriptions, and that would be uh, exposed by the repository. Um, and then we would be able to uh, ingest that directly into that data mat. The other uh, part of it, maybe I see Philippe is on the call, so maybe he can talk a little bit more about uh, AIM2, where we are uh, working uh, on extending schema.org a little bit more. Philippe, you want to talk about that? Hello, yes, indeed. Good, good evening, everyone. Um, yeah, so in a way, the, the data set descriptor that exists currently in, in the schema.org has been definitely fed and inspired by the model uh, that, that, has, well, that uh, BioCaddy has produced. And um, at the moment, it has only very few tags, and I guess it, it could benefit from a number of um, additions that, that the DATS model provides. At the same time, conversely, I think one of the the, 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 the message that we got from, from the people starting implementing the schema.org data set is the, um, the low entry, uh, the low barrier entry to, to, to marking up the, their pages with, with the schema.org profile. And I guess uh, that that's simplification um, would, would be one of the goal for an evolution of the DATS model to make sure that um, the core can be annotated very, very easily, and then more advanced construct can be uh, can be brought in when when needed, and when the uh, the target repositories uh, want to expose more of the metadata for indexing and discovery. And to that extent, in a way, we we are uh, we need to reach out back to to the IEDB uh, repository uh, with which we started a collaboration, uh, doing a full mapping of one of their landing page uh, for the record of, of the result of a save. And, and from there, we will probably test a couple of profiles to see which are the ones that are uh, uh, most efficient to produce for them uh, with the most effect, cost effective um, um, action on their side. OK, thank you, Philippe. Um, so essentially, the plan is to, uh, if the data document uh, is embedded on the landing page in the repository, then it can be indexed uh, by harvested and indexed by, you know, generalized uh, search, en search engines and bots. Um, so I, I actually was looking into uh, FITBER a little bit today and realize that unless um, you have uh, an account in FIDBER, there is no way uh, to search. Is that right, Matt? That's correct. So uh, is there a way for, for us to access or for you to export your metadata to us? I think that's the the first step for us to start ingesting. I mean, Jeff can talk more about this part. Well, I mean, this gets to sort of the the type of you know DATS export, you know, because that would have some of the basic data map that you know isn't, um, you know, like the name and the description, which isn't uh, PHI, right? Um, so. Right now, we do not expose um, uh, the actual data um, without having to go through the uh, data access committee and therefore getting an account. 
we do expose um, some of the, um, the metadata about studies to the public site. And we tried to use the appropriate um, definitions uh, and variable names that were defined in the DATS specification. Um, we do also provide some summary data on the, ex on the public site also that, you know, the, how many subjects are associated with that particular study, as well as the forms um, that were used to collect the data and the data elements that were used to collect the, uh, the data. So Did that kind of answer list, your question? Sorry. Where's the public site? Okay. Um, it is at, oh, go ahead. No, if, I, if you're on your computer, I can give you presenter access if you want to just. Okay, yeah, I can do that. I can show you, sure. Did I answer your question, Jeff? Yeah, yeah. Good, okay. Uh, download, to continue, download what meeting plugin, I guess. Okay, run. Uh, so give me just a moment. It's having me install a plugin. That's fine. working. Hmm. And then you need to share. Okay. And share. And I just share the oh, share desktop. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Oh, is it showing both screens or? Yeah. So you can pick which screen you want to share. Okay. Um. Oops. Where'd it go? Uh, I think it's still trying to. You don't, do you see any of my screen? Uh, see a white, just a white okay. screen. Yeah, I just have, it's showing white on mine also at the moment. It's thinking. Oh, okay. I think we're. Yeah. Share your entire desktop. Okay. Share desktop. Um, do you see it now? Do you see my desktop? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, so this is the Fitbird website, fitbird.nih.gov. And so um, there's information. One of them is um, the data dictionary, and these uh, contain all the data elements that are associated with um, studies, um, many of them common data elements. If you go to form structures, it essentially lists the forms that are associated with many of the studies in the system. And I'm, I'm going to unclick just the only um, form structures that have been published actually have data submitted against them. But if I click on one of these form structures, like the 12 item short form, it'll come back and list the data elements that are associated with this particular form. And if I click on one of the data elements, it gives me a lot of detail about that particular data element. What are the permissible values, um, the variable name, a little bit of description about it, and again, the permissible values, and also some other information associated with, the, uh, with that data element. Um, okay, but now let's, uh, let's go back to the FitBird page. I think it's a little bit more interesting is the actual submitted data. And this gets into where I had discussed the, um, the summary data. So here's the summary data of all the, we're looking at expanding this, but right now we have summary data for all the studies. There's six, over 60,000 subjects submitted. This is their age range. Uh, this is their gender makeup and then um, imaging data. We also want to put in here some information about you know, Glasgow Coma Scale or their Gossi score or some other information about it. 
But down below this is a, um, and this is scraped, I think, nightly off our, um, our off our portal. And I, what I call it when I refer to portal, I mean that's where you you have had to have logged in to get into the system. Um, but these are our definitions of um, a study. And if we click, well, I'll just search on one right now because I know that one, uh, Manly. And if I track, uh, click on Jeff Manley, it has information about, uh, a little bit of information about the study and hopefully these are consistent uh, with how they're defined, the, at least the variable name, how they're defined within um, the DAT specification. We have abstract aims. Forms is interesting because it tells you the actual forms that are being used to collect that data. Uh, for this particular study, and I actually can click on one of these forms and find out, again, um, which data elements and how those data elements were defined to collect that particular data. Um, we're so are these studies like prospective ones that are ongoing, or are they completed studies? Both. Um, so we have, uh, so let's just go back to this. Um, this column indicates whether or not there's any data um, and whether or not they had shared data. So shared data would probably be more of a legacy kind of data, uh, data set that has been collected, submitted, and is now available for other people to access. Um, going back to the man, man, Manly, um, He's got two studies. This one, this pilot, is actually that was data collected against it, and this data is shared, and that was a legacy uh, data set. Uh, the pilot study was back done in 2012, I think. The new study, the prospective study that they're actively collecting data, um, is this new study, which is the extension of the first study. So we have some of um, all the different kinds of studies. Um, So, um, Jeff, I have a question. For data med, uh, would we would we actually pull in uh, prospective studies? I mean, we could pull. I mean, again, it, I think here the the really the only thing is what what would have information that is publicly visible on the site, right? Um, and then we would just have to denote, you know, using uh, you know George's uh, you know the accessibility uh, descriptors. You know, we we need to you know basically say that this is you know that you know requires uh, approval to to actually get at the data. Right. And you could have some if there is any summary data about it. You could actually um, you know expose that too. You could right. Going to hear. Yeah, so that, yeah, that was sort of the, the follow up question is, you know, if we wanted to set a landing page, you know, is, is it possible to, to point then at the summary data as a landing page, um, you know, for that, for that study? Um, and is so that I, available somehow? Yeah, I think that's, um, yeah, very doable. So if the, you found it at Data Med, you could click on this link and it would take you to here. So all of this data is on the um, the public site, and I don't. I'm a little bit weak on this, but could this information actually be scraped from the website, or would you want us to put it into some kind of file? Actually, we generate this thing from a JSON file. Yeah, I mean, if you have the JSON file, yeah, we could we could we could use that. Okay. You know, just, uh, yeah, we, we could go two two routes. Also, we could uh, look at ways to embed the schema.org annotation directly into your your page, or via a script tag to point to the to another file. Yeah, um, my my guess is you would probably take our JSON file and probably write a fairly easy, somewhat straightforward converter and get it into your the DAT's actual schema. Right. Right. Especially if you are alive already, so yeah. Okay. Um, so I can get you an example of the DATS file. That is a good idea. Okay. 
Now, for the first part, I don't think that you will ever be able to give you access, or at least not in the short term, access to the actual login credentials to index the actual data in the system. Um, but this does give an awful lot of information about the data that, um, metadata about the data that's in the system. So right. I think anyways, we, uh, at DataMed, we don't index data per se. We okay. index only metadata. So I think... Okay. So should I send? I can send that file to you, Anu, and then you can forward it to whoever needs it. Yeah, sure. Okay. So how? But how would we? Uh, is this something that would be a feed that we would receive the JSON files? from you and how often do you update it? Right. Um, we update this nightly. Um, and yeah, I'm not sure which is the best way to do this. Uh, send this someplace or that if we put this at a specific location here, is there some place that you could just, or I mean some way that you write the and I'm not sure which is the best way, but you write a process that just then grabs that JSON file and, and... Yeah, I mean, we have the ability to grab the JSON file if it's somewhere that we can access it. Okay. And I can find out where that's... It's probably stored over here on the public site for all I know uh, already. But um, if not, we can actually save it and then uh, let you know where that file has been saved and give you access to it. Um, yeah, there's probably, and that's, yeah, um, well, we'll worry about that another date. I was just going to say, I could, let's see if I can just log in for just a second. Here I am. Here's our data repository. And if I actually go into a uh, study, there's a lot more metadata information that we don't get to the outside that we probably, to the public site that we should probably, we probably should. And if you look, Hopefully that these are these definitions or labels are consistent with the labels that you all use, um, and you know we we're whoops that one's probably not as much of an interest but the administrative files data set. Yes, it's mostly this information. I thought there was more information that can be associated with a particular. Oh yeah, this is. If you start filling out all this information, we built this to be consistent, again, with uh, the DATS. Most of the studies right now, just because we've installed this functionality, don't have a lot of the information uh, entered into it yet. Um, and um, therefore, a lot of it's empty right now. So it's going to take us a little while to populate some of this uh, information. So are all of these included in your JSON file, or is this something? Excellent no, question. Okay. I will look into that also. I'm hoping that we scraped it all off and take it to the public site, and then we just expose the things that we're interested in exposing. Um, that way, it would, you know, all that information is already over there. If not, then that requires us a little longer term to figure out how to or I mean to write the code that gets everything over in the JSON file. But let me find out what the right answer to that is, though. Okay. okay. Um, I think one of the neat things, again, in this one is not only the metadata about, and there's a little bit of summary data, again, about the uh, particular person uh, or about the, but the, um, the actual forms that they used, um, which I guess it turns out a lot of people when they're actually looking at the data, they're, they're interested in the kinds of data and what kind of forms were actually collected. So you know, I don't know if that helps you, which, again, then relates to the actual data elements mm -hmm. that were actually collected in the study. So. <coughs> so 
So, uh, are there any questions for Matt? So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think that the first step is, you know, getting, you know, access to that JSON file and seeing where that is. Yep. So I have three things, yeah. One is getting you, a, I can get you a copy of it and just send it to you and then I can find out where it's going to be saved and if it's not saved, to get it saved. Um, and then lastly, what's actually in that JSON file? Is it all the information, the metadata that we have or is it just a subset? And I can probably figure that out pretty quickly or get that information pretty quickly. So uh, after we uh, map and uh, after we uh, map everything to, I don't think it will take a long time, but we we would be mapping everything to the DAT current DAT model that we have. Uh, and uh, if we would, we were thinking about embedding uh, the, you know, the markups into the landing page at your repository, what, what's the protocol we would need to follow? I mean, how do we go about doing that? So, um, yeah, I don't quite understand it. So if it was, uh, let me just go to the landing page here of one. So I didn't quite understand. What did you want to, what were you proposing to do? So the one of the uh, plans uh, for us is to actually <clears throat> is to um, help repository provide um, the DAT and schema.org JSON messaging. So we will produce the JSON DAT document for each landing page, and the repository can embed it. In a, in a way that you would embed a schema.org JSON document. So, so you know, you, it, that would expose the metadata for harvesting by generalized search engines. Okay, so essentially we would have one more thing associated with this particular URL, and that would be your JSON file that's in the specific DAT format slash schema. Right. And that somebody who's scraping all of these then would have access to that. Right. Um, wow, that's a good question. Uh, we, um, this is a Drupal page. Um, and we obviously want to automate this process because we don't want to have anyone um, So I mean, uh, f I guess my my f the first step would be to actually ensure that uh, we have appropriate um, permissions in place, right, to be able to do this. Right. So right. So yeah. I mean, because this is a Drupal, and you have access control to actually who can edit the page and how it can be edited. Um, I would need to, yeah, let me talk to our Drupal person. So what would actually go onto the page, onto this page? Would it be just a, a link or? Uh, Philippe or Jeff, do you want to answer and, that? I mean, this gets to, I mean, down the road in terms of, you know, you, I mean, placing sort of the schema.org dats metadata in the landing pages themselves on your end, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so that's more of a programmatic thing. I mean, right now you said you have the JSON file as output. Um, you know, we can take that um, and then, you know, we have uh, a schema.org output on data med, um, which, you know, uh, you can then look at and then, you know, the question is, you know, you know, how, how would you potentially then embed that, you know, on your end if you do it, you know. Again, I don't know how the pages get 
uh, get created, like if there's any Drupal code that, that, that is pulling data from, you know, the database? And, um. Yeah, so I think the step is that we pull it from our database on the portal side, produce the JSON, and then that JSON is rendered here. Okay. Um, so, I mean, but if you, we wanted to render it like you render it in, in data med, would that, could that be another tab here that says, and you click on this tab and then we render the JSON file that we got back from you in that tab, is that? Well, I mean, the, I mean, schema.org, I mean, you basically, um, I mean, there are multiple ways to do it, but one of them is to sort of link to a uh, schema.org uh, uh, JSON file. Um, and I'm not sure if that's required to be on site or not, on, you know, on the same site. I mean, uh, Philippe, do you know if it, if it can be provided by some other site or does it have to be in the same domain? Um, that's a good question. I, the, the, the one I've tested, we embed the, the, the script, well, the, 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 the schematic organization uh, in the HTML script tag and right. point, uh, can also point to the file. So that doesn't need to be uh, necessarily uh, appearing as a tab on the UI, and it can be possibly pointing to another URL that holds the same document. That's my understanding, but I can definitely check on that and get back to you. Okay. Is there? Do you have an example that you guys could show me of, of this that you've done for somebody, or? Or uh, yes, just bear with me to dig it up. Okay. And should I unshare it myself then? Sure. Uh, Philip, you want me to make you a presenter? Okay. Let me just make Well, if I can find a link, just bear with me. It's. Uh, <laughs> So would it help if we showed you the schema.org annotations and the markup that is being done on data map currently? Because sure. I'm assuming that it would be very similar, right? I'd be happy to so, see whichever. So Firat? Yes. Can we pull that up at your end? Uh, can you come again? What's that? Can you so can we pull up the schema.org uh, markups that we have on the landing pages currently? So do you want the metadata, the attributes, or something? So we are converting our attributes to the schema.org attributes. Right, right. So, so can we show an example? Uh, so can we share the screen here? Yeah. So you, you can go to, uh, yeah, it's uh, datamet.org. Okay. Okay, is there something? I, I, just in case, I found a link and I can also back up or show you how it is done in another Context. So, uh, go ahead, Philip. So, our screen is not shared now, right? No, I just gave you presenter status, but I need to install a plugin at the moment. So, I yeah, I take sorry that. about that. It does it every time. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> not at all. You can you can share your I guess whoever wants wants to do it. Share the 
Maybe Philip, you can go first. Philip, I don't think we can hear you speaking. Oh, yes. Sorry, I was on mute. It's getting late here. <laughs> uh, so yes, this is a the the, the, uh, we, the source can the, which can be viewed from the reactor page that serves a reaction in that instance, uh, gene expression transcription, um, and and basically that that shows the uh, the schematodoc profile uh, is expressed as a JSON document embedded into the HTML page uh, that serves the um, uh, the, the record. Um, so. If I actually switch back to and and change to to my to Chrome, so I can show you that directly. Um, if we go to the reactum page directly here, you've got that information. Uh, we don't see anything. But basically, uh, as soon as I, I, I switch back to the source, then it's, it appears um, in this element here. So script type JSON application LD plus JSON. Um, and I believe that so in that page, the whole JSON document is embedded. But it can obviously be quite, quite large in some instances where we have many, many variables that may be uh, uh, presented to the search engine. Uh, so I believe that it is possible to point to a URI from there uh, that would, um, uh, and the document itself would be sitting somewhere else. But this I will have to check because I cannot give you the answer at the moment. It's, um, uh, uh, it would be uh, unclear. So I had just a quick question. So um, yep. I'm, I'm a little bit new to this. So is what's happening, there is a schema at uh, a would there be a data med or dat schema at schema.org? And then the JSON file knows how to be rendered based on that schema. And then you render, well, this code renders that? Or how does it? How does now it this work? is in the, the, the schema.org. I mean, this content is additional structured metadata that is basically picked up from search engines like Google. Okay. Um, so, I mean, it doesn't have to be used by the page at all. And it does not need to be rendered, I think. That's, that's the main thing. So, and also what we need to, following the discussions that we, we had, and, and, and uh, the idea is that some of the, the that core would be completely aligned, or the, the, the data, sorry, the, the way around, actually, the schema.org dataset profile would be completely aligned with the data score. Uh, but at the moment, I guess, uh, a number of constructs available in the data, in the DATS model are probably too rich or too, too advanced for uh, uptake by schema.org dataset profile. Uh, so in that sense, we would have to rely the fallback position if you want a richer description um, you, you could extend the uh, data set schema of organization with that full and uh, upon crawling by uh, an uptake by the, the search and crawlers, 
some of the data would be left out from, from the discovery aspects or discovery services provided by the search engine. Um, so that would have to be clear. And maybe as the, that, the data set profile evolves under the schema.org, uh, maybe it will get richer and, and take more of the, uh, the data constructs that we have. And again, this is kind of interaction that we need to, to, to have, uh, probably also to review some of the, uh, against the use case that we have to, to make sure that this, this kind of uh, uh, discovery process can, can, can happen and happens efficiently. Um, so, um, I, I'm sorry to be a, a little bit dense here, and I, I'm trying to ask some of these questions because I'm. I think at the next meeting, um, I would really like to have my um, Drupal uh, developer sit in on it. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I still don't understand where DAT fits in, where the JSON file fits in, and what you would put on my page or on the Fitbit page. So uh, let's see if we can uh, deconstruct this. Uh, the I, w okay. So the goal is basically to provide search engines with structured metadata, right? That doesn't have to be rendered on the site at all, but structured metadata about data sets. Okay. Um, so that you know, just like how they have those little, um, you know, when you end up on a Google search and you search a movie and you see the little info box on the right, right? Right. Because they're pulling structured metadata from Rotten Tomatoes and IMDB and, you know, all these other sites, right? Got it. That structured metadata, they're actually able to do some additional things. Okay. Uh, and, again, that would also be a way for, for example, uh, data med, you know, and, and other sort of focused uh, search engines to, you know, you know, basically pull in that metadata as well in that in, in that way. Mm -hmm. And so there is work now in schema.org, uh, that's what Philippe uh, was mentioning, you know, to extend to data sets. And, you know, we, you know, uh, uh, Susanna and Philippe and Alejandra had developed DATS. Um, and so, you know, the question now is how to align those, right? And so as Philippe was explaining, there's a basic level of metadata. I mean, just like Dublin Core for PubMed, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know that is sort of what would be the schema.org representation. But in PubMed, for example, you know you also have information on you know chemicals and you know related databases, things that aren't in the core, right? And so right. that metadata model has to be extended a little bit. And so that's where these DATS extensions would come in. They'd be sort of extensions to the scheme.org core for, you know, data set specific uh, metadata that, that, that uh, people find uh, important for the site. Um, and so I think that's the basic. Uh, Philippe, did I get that right? I think. No, absolutely, yes. yes. Okay. And, uh, and so then the, then the question is how do you get that on your site, right? Or how do you repositories get that on their site. Okay. And so one way would be that, you know, if you're generating, you know, JSON for the pages anyway, you might be able to do that yourselves. Um, the other option potentially, and, and that was the question that came up, if, if someone else is already providing, you know, a schema.org DATS representation, you know, could you just link to that? And and that's a, that's sort of an open question. I'm not, I mean, we'd have to check to see if that allows that. Right. But yeah, so that's, I think. Okay. Yep, this makes much more sense. Yeah. Okay. Appreciate it. Okay. So, are there any questions uh, for Matt? Um, any other questions? Or anything else that we need to discuss? I guess this is um, um, probably another question, but more a follow-up discussion that we, we, we probably will need to have. And it, 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 this echoes the meeting we had back in May when we met, um, uh, the meeting organized by you and George on, on the um, 
um, basically the, um, the variable and, and, and CDEs, um, it would be the, how to best use the dimension of objects and how to relate that to uh, the variable measured in the, the schema.org profile and, and these kind of things. Um, and how much can be presented in summarized data, as, as uh, it was discussed earlier on. Um, but I would say that's a, a, something that we can follow up by email or dedicated calls. Yeah, that sounds, sounds good on our side. So uh, I am. I'm just trying to make sure I understood the question. So you're talking more about the mapping and how uh, the dimensions were used, right, Philip? Right. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And because with Bear and they've got a very rich set of of uh, um, questionnaires and 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 that are stored and. And that would be a, an extremely valuable set to yep. index. And those are all mapped back to the common data elements too, right? Or yes, they are yes. the common data elements? Uh, the uh, data sets are, I mean, the form structures contain the data elements. That's correct. The actual okay. data elements of the data collected. Yeah. And it depends. Some people are very interested in getting down to the granular level, and some people I first want to understand which forms were actually collected, and then our form structure defines which forms, and then also the data elements associated with that form structure or that form. I think currently when we're talking about deeper indexing, we were looking into uh, getting down to the variable level, not the value level, though, at that point of time. So it makes sense that we would get down to look at the data elements in the form and that right. we would uh, index at that level of granularity. Yep, that would make sense. Um, and it must be in the JSON file that we produce because um, you know, we obviously render those, those forms. Um, now, when we render the forms uh, or the list of the names, we probably then build in the link that links back to the data dictionary that then lists out the data elements. They're probably not part of the JSON form. But you would have the links to the data elements and then the, the data dictionary is publicly available. Um, I'm not sure if there's an API or a standard API for it yet, though. So uh, we should be able to uh, get the information through the API, you think? If there, yeah, let me find out what the API looks like for our, for the data dictionary. Okay. Now, do you meet every other week? Is that or every week? No, we or? meet every week. Okay. When would be a good time for me to join in again? Uh, I guess um, next week too. If you, I mean, I don't think we have anything else or any other um, meeting or specifically outside folks joining in the call next week. So if if we feel that we have, we will have all the information required to take the you know discussion further. We could meet next week. It depends on your availability. Uh, yeah, if we didn't meet next week, it would have to go all the way into uh, into November. Um, there's a meeting on Monday and Tuesday uh, of the week <coughs> of the week of the 30th. Um, actually, I'll probably see Jeff. Um, are you, are you going to be at Inford there, Jeff? Uh, potentially, yeah. Okay, so I might see Jeff there. But um, actually, if we meet uh, next Tuesday, and I'll, I'll have our uh, some people who know a little bit more detail about um, uh, some of the questions and some of the things that we had here and should be able to give you a little bit better, um, more detailed information on how we set up those pages 
um, and what our JSON file looks like. I should have at least a JSON file before the next meeting and I can send it to you, but we can talk about it in more detail at the meeting okay. next Tuesday if that works. Yeah. Okay. Jeff, are you available next Tuesday, Jeff and Philippe? Yep. yep. Okay. Sounds good then. Okay. Very good. Well, this looks kind of this looks exciting. I'm looking forward to to making this interact uh, well with uh, DataMed. Yeah, I'm glad you know, uh, and we will get get started and get going. Yep. Um, are there uh, were there anything else that we wanted to talk about? Are there any issues that we need to? Talk about before we uh, discuss. If not, uh, then we'll finish five minutes early today. Thank you all for calling in. Uh, hello, hello. Hi. Yeah, hi. Hi, this is Nancy. And uh, I actually want to ask that. Uh, you remember, like a couple of weeks ago, I uh, reported that two of the repository we received already uh, ingested and it can be searched in, in data map so right right yeah so um, so how we should dealing with that so but those were uh, those were the repositories which were like the repositories of, so we can just get back to the repositories I mean you can let Sandra know that those are already available on data set data map Mm -hmm. And uh, Sandra should be able to reply back to the uh, repository folks who actually submitted the information to let them know that those have been are already indexed in data mat. Okay. Is that so? But Nansu, uh, quick mm -hmm. question: uh, Did you um, did we ensure that we are Actually, I mean, whatever. So, which of the which of these were the repositories? Uh, wait, which which, were which the of the repositories? Yeah. Um, let me see. Um, so one is uh, uh, Figure Share. Another is okay. uh, Giga Science. Giga Science. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. What I'm saying is, if we don't need to. Um, Further uh, ingest those two repositories. Like we may take more repository because now we are uh, we are still contacting the uh, the the rest two repositories, and uh, there's no reply uh, from them yet. So uh, we can take more if you uh, from the list. So uh, I know you said those are already ingested, right? Yes. Uh, but uh, are we ingesting them? Through no Giga Science, I, I uh, we are in that in, ingesting them through data site. So I wonder, Jeff, uh, is this a case where we would go go to the primary repository? We can. I mean, we can to see if they have additional. I mean, yeah. I mean, we can we can check with them to see if they if they have any additional metadata. They may not. Right, a data site may be there, um, maybe all they provide, but we can definitely double check with them. Right. So, uh, Nansu, would you would you be able to write back to them to find out if they have metadata? Um, the conference has been what, unmuted. Uh, can you repeat? What, so uh, the the point is, we are ingesting both Figshare and Giga Science via data site. And uh, the what Jeff suggested is to ensure, um, or we double check with them to see if they have additional metadata besides what they're what they are you know pushing through data site. Okay. And if so, then we may want to uh, go to the primary repository and in that ingest that. Okay. So, but um, I, 
actually the I was wondering who was before working on those two repositories because we might want to know that how we uh, uh, originally extracted those metadata. Either the repository provides or we just uh, um, no. If it's, if it's from, from data site, it's from I mean, data site is an aggregator. Uh huh. Okay. So, so data so site you is. Are, so you extract the metadata from the from the API or? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we may take a look at those uh, metadata. We. Um, how you extract it, then we're gonna contact it with the owner that uh, maybe they have extra, or we're gonna we're gonna uh, cross compare the current uh, metadata extract from API with the, the what can be searched in the data map. Right. Okay. So uh, say that again. I'm not sure. Uh... So what do you mean uh, by, but uh, Jeff, the API you are talking about is the data site API, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a data site API is, is what's being. So that would now, essentially right? be the same as what you would be able to search in DataMind. Yes. But so they might we, have native APIs. Ah, so we'll have to figure that out. Right. Yeah. Okay. But again, they may not. Yeah, so we're going to we're going to check first and then we will write a letter to them to confirm with them. So, then I come back with results uh, in the next maybe CDT core or next next CDT core. Okay. So, Fixshare at least has an API, I think. So, maybe you can look at that, Nancy. Okay. Yeah. Let's see to see if they have additional okay. metadata. Okay. So so Jeff the team did the two repository, right? Maybe I, I, I will if there's a question I can send a, a question uh, to send an email to Jeff to, to ask. Yeah. Okay, okay, good. Okay. Uh is there okay. Is there anything else that we need to talk about? Does anybody else have any other issue they want to bring up? If not, I think uh, then we're done for the day. Thank you all for calling in. Thank you all. Bye. 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 Bye.